Now I'll move on and continue on this issue. So we have this surge that's going, or rather we have this surge which people are saying, and we have to address that term because it is wrong. And people are pushing back, you know, when we talk about this. And when they say that, the reason why we shouldn't use that term is because this is not an invasion. And in fact, when you want to talk about that, we should be owning the fact that US foreign policy has contributed to the destabilization of these regions and of the very countries that are now mired in a lot of violence that these families and these children are fleeing. So we cannot use that term not to police it, not to be politically correct, but because we know what the level and the steps of dehumanization lead to. We just experienced this last year. And I'm not going to allow the Stephen Millers of the world to pretend that he didn't do what he did and to act like this is the same. I have been in contact with the Biden administration personally. And what I can tell you that's different about this administration, again, I'm not here to excuse it. I'm not here to say this is good. I'm not here to do anything. But one thing that is different is that they're trying to figure out and they're trying to, to create the resources to actually end this problem. And the Trump administration was contributing to it. They contributed to it with zero tolerance. They contributed it with the fear. They contributed it with this freaking census question. They contributed to it. So all of this is to say that there's no excuse for this system, that all of it is morally wrong, that it's repugnant, but we, but we can at least work to change it. And that's really what we need a deep change on this issue. So anyways, what I'm gonna go, uh, what I wanna move on to is saying, we, while we need to make sure that we make the infrastructure and actual investments, that we can treat this as a humanitarian issue, um, not a militaristic issue, because once again, Donald Trump responded to a lot of these issues by allocating military to the US border instead of what we actually need is investments in USCIS processors, in the people who can process people's visas, in the investments uh, in social services so that children are in a safe environment while their family member is located and verified. Um, and again, that this isn't a one-time issue. Every time this happens, folks like to weaponize it and pretend that this is a new emergency. It's not. And we should be doing better by now. Um, and if we actually want to solve this, we will get to the root. We should be addressing the root causes of these issues with our foreign policy, our economic policy, our trade policy, and our climate policy. Because this is going to, the volume of these shifts are going to increase as droughts increase, as, as farmers in other countries are not able to make the living that they're able to make, as rural communities and other communities destabilized by violence. You know, we have decades of interventionist foreign policy that have contributed to this issue. And people don't wanna talk about it but then, but then they wanna act like this is brand new every time. So we have a choice to make as a country if we're actually going to solve this issue holistically, humanely, like our, like our own families did. You know, so many people, I hear the stories where their grandmother or their grandfather came to the United States through Ellis Island when they were 15 years old fleeing God knows what, horrors. And their parents made a choice that if they had to never see their child again, but they felt like their child would be safer coming here to the United States, that they made that heartbreaking choice. 
And people tell that story, that Ellis Island story about their family, about their grandparents, about their great grandparents, and yet they fail to see themselves in these kids. So we have a lot of work to do on our policy including addressing the policy that makes these children unaccompanied to begin with because it's easier to send a child alone in our in our immigration policy than it is to have a family come together. So there's a lot of work that we have to do. We have a lot of legislative proposals. We've we've I'm a prime sponsor of the Roadmap to Freedom Act where we start outlining some of the legislative solutions to this but we got to stop using immigrants as a political weapon and start actually caring about the same legacy that they have that ties our history and destiny up with them. Thank so that's all I have to say about that.